Boom. It's day 30 of the No Media series. For all you guys only tuning into these videos, this is where I disconnect from the most popular platforms of social media and media in general. Let me explain. This includes Instagram, Facebook, it includes YouTube, YouTube videos, YouTube shorts, Instagram, X, Twitter, whatever. Never had Twitter, but anyways. It includes podcast, movies, series. It includes the news, the radio, you name it. This is where I try to disconnect from all of these. Obviously, I cannot control all of these things 100%, but I do try to limit it to the max. So this is where I share my experience of how I feel every day while I stay disconnected. So this is day 30. So let me speak today about a couple of things. So I believe that I found the actual real danger of social media. And I actually found the real danger of media consumption in general. So I'll break it down into two parts. But first, let me speak about social media and why it is dangerous, first of all. Social media, although it's meant to connect us, it's meant to make communication more accessible and easier. It does the quite opposite. We have a friendship group. Some of us do, some of us don't. But the thing is it's abundance that is the most dangerous part in social media we are given an abundant variety of ways to communicate with them so we stop appreciating our friends we stop appreciating the time we have with them we stop appreciating them in general because communication is so easy it's not even done you don't even communicate because you know you can do it any time so you do not make an effort to do it Whereas a number of years ago, you would have to actually physically, right, physically send a letter, make a phone call, reach out somehow, like go to their house and say, you know, how's, how's it going? How are you doing? You know, these days you can just have a, a group, a group chat where everybody is in the group chat and no one does anything. And it's like, you know, it's unappreciated. It's so easy to communicate and... You know your friendship group is there because you have the group chat, but yet no one says anything. So it's like you don't really think about it. But whereas if you had a friend and you didn't reach out to them for like a couple of years, you'd be like, something's going on, you know, like something's gone wrong here. And you'd go up and check up on them or else you lose a friend, right? So this, this whole uh, philosophy of abundance is very fascinating to me. And I believe it's the main reason of why Social media is dangerous in general because we have abundant choices. It's like grass is always greener. You know, you have so many options of like anything, role models, girls, boys, whatever you're into, you know, it's like you have an abundance of anything you want on social media and your eyes can see it, but you cannot physically have it. You cannot physically do it. So it's like so unnatural to us. So like our brains have not gotten used to this whole thing of social media it's it's unnatural it's very unnatural and it's not doing anything for us on un, un, unless just causing us harm that's all it does it just causes us harm and nothing else really it breaks down communication it doesn't it doesn't link communication it doesn't make it easier it completely breaks it down so all because of the factor of abundance now the second thing I wanted to speak about is the dangers of media and how to properly restrict yourself from the media with your control, something that you can control. So first of all, I, f I think that the most dangerous media consumption is the one that you do not know what comes next. So let me explain. Whenever you're scrolling, let's say Instagram, you do not know what comes next. It's mindless consumption. You are being fed information and you're not you're not choosing what you see. So you're being fed any sort of random AI algorithm garbage. That's all I can really come up with, garbage. So you do not see what comes next and this is the dangerous thing. You need to be able to see what comes next. It's it's mindless consumption and you get completely immersed in the experience of using your devices, your phone, your tablet, your computer, anything. You get immersed in the experience, immersed. <laughs> the, 
again, immersed in, fuck, am I saying that again? Immersed in the experience of using that device in the moment and you completely lose touch with your surroundings. It's like you're in that device, like you're physically inside of your device. <laughs> That's kind of funny, but yeah. So it's like surroundings do not exist anymore. Like you don't know who's around you. You don't know what's going on. Like you don't even see your room. Like your peripheral re vision completely turns off and you're in the screen. It's like you're inside of it. So yeah, you need to be able to choose what you see next. This is why I believe that platforms like TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube are all really, really dangerous, especially the short form content that destroys your attention span, destroys your brain cells, makes you unable to focus for a longer period of time, which is very necessary to build good memory and build good relationships with people. It's it's necessary to have a good attention span to even just be clever, wise, to grow as a human being, to like be successful. You need a good attention span, but they're trying to destroy it. So I'm not too sure how the world is going to end up later on, but you need to be able to see what comes next. When you scroll to the next reel, the next TikTok, the next, you know, YouTube short, you do not know what you're going to see next. The same with whenever you get recommended videos, right? This is partial. So whenever you get recommended a video, let's say you're watching my video right now, on the side somewhere here, you have like recommended videos, right? That's dangerous. You do not, like you, sometimes you don't even think about what's inside of that video. You just see the title, you click it. Like next, 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 next. It's mindless. You do not have control over it. It's like you're immersed in this thing again. Right now, I'm going to give you an opposite scenario of where you actually have control. So having control means you go about your day. You just live your life, right? You're in work, you're doing your thing. You're, let's say, in the gym. And you're like, hmm, I wonder how you fix this one thing. I wonder how you, like, put on new guitar strings, right? So you go on YouTube, right? How to put on new guitar strings. Okay, click watch the video okay follow the tutorial perfect new guitar strings on that's it close youtube go about your day do what you need to do right another moment boom thing goes into your head oh i wonder how like something works in the forest like how do you build a campfire or you want to just see someone enjoying some part of the country maybe that you want to visit quite soon so it's like, right, top five things to do in this particular country, right? Cool. Watch the video. Click. Done. You're finished with the video. No clicking next. Unless you really, really choose to do so. Unless you really need to watch it. Otherwise, it's mindless consumption. You do not choose what you watch. And that's where the real problems come in. That's where you lose touch with yourself. You lose track of your own life. And you're completely immersed in the experience of using your device. So that's kind of what I of what I've been thinking about all day. So yeah, if you like these type of videos and you don't mind me talking for like nearly 10 minutes about random stuff and giving out about social media, then consider liking the video, subscribing, and sharing with your friends. So that's the kind of thing I talk about. When I really get into it, I get passionate about the whole you know, the whole thing. So you can probably see it at times. But anyways, as always, thank you for watching the video and peace.